Hello everyone. Today I will be talking about Fahrenheit 451 and the deep effects it had on society 60 years ago and the impacts it still has today. But before we do that, um, let me tell you about the tea I'm drinking today. I'm drinking um, Twinnings Chai French Vanilla. Um, it's a very good tea. You definitely can taste the vanilla. It's more of a sweeter tea. Um, I like this. I like the stronger stuff, and so it's not my favorite, but it does taste good. Um, I'm more into green teas, but this is today's tea. Twinnings Chai French Vanilla. I'd still recommend it if you like the sweeter teas. Ray Bradbury wrote this book in 1951, as fast as anyone ever could really write a book. He wrote it in the downstairs section of a public library using rented typewriters that costed 25 cents an hour. And so basically, he just would get an idea and he'd just write and write and write until basically he had no money left. And so this book really is just straight from the dome. He didn't have time to rethink what he wanted to write. He just wrote it and sent it to a publisher. I really enjoy it. Fahrenheit 451, and I think most readers would if they have a love for reading, and especially uh, dystopian futures. A lot of times writers will write about a future where we're not there, but they're predicting what will happen if this continues on, whatever this may be. And in Ray Bradbury's case, it was the television. 1950, the television was getting very, very big and very popular. Radio was already starting to die out in homes. Most people didn't listen to the radio in their homes anymore. All they would do is watch TV. So a lot of formats were starting to die. And Ray Bradbury wrote this, and he sort of basically saw what our reality is becoming today. People not reading. So it takes place in the early 24th century, so we are still a ways away, but we can see a lot of what he was talking about in this book that came out over 60 years ago. This book follows Guy Montag, a fireman, but in this universe, a fireman isn't what they are today. They're literally a fireman. Instead of protecting people from fires, they start fires. And basically, they just sit around and train all day until they get a call saying that a house or a library that has books in it needs to be burnt down. And they go and they just burn it down. And basically, the guy, that's his name, Guy Montag, he realizes what he's doing isn't exactly right, but he doesn't know why. He doesn't know why he, he wants to do something different. He just has that feeling in him from someone interesting that he meets along the way. In this society, books are illegal. All anyone does at home is watch TV and basically live in virtual reality experiences, which I think is very interesting how in a lot of ways Ray Bradbury predicted what we'd be doing today living in virtual realities. Um, in a lot of ways, like the book portrays, people are just tired of their own lives. They're not interesting enough to want to live them, so they live other people's lives through TV or virtual reality. It doesn't describe it in too much detail. It leaves it very vague, but if one of us were to read it, we'd probably think of VR headsets. Bradbury wrote this in the height of the Cold War where there was mass paranoia between everyone and investigations under basically anyone who did art. And this book kind of shows that in a lot of ways. Everyone at the time in 1951 was scared of nuclear war. And th that's why no bullets were fired during the Cold War. Because if one bullet was shot, then that could set off a whole nuclear war and basically be the end of mankind. And we see this a lot in the book, the paranoia and fear of the government. As in 1951, the government was scared of anyone who did arts, wrote, painted, 
uh, created films as they could be communist working for Russia in disguise. Um, so this book portrays that very well, and not to mention the outcomes of society once the book came out. This book alone started investigations uh, from the FBI as they thought maybe Ray Bradbury might be a communist as well, um, which is sort of what he feared and was talking about in his book is what happened to him. The government was paranoid about him being a communist for having the ability to write and create something. Bradbury wrote about the future he didn't want to happen. He believes that books are a necessary part of our life, and without them, we'll be nothing but mindless zombies who have no brain functions of our own. Um, and I think he's 100% correct with that. Fahrenheit 451 shows a lot of ways that our society is going down. That the only people smart enough to have their own lives and wills are the people creating television and entertainment and media. And everyone else is just a sheep consuming all of that. And our society is starting to go more and more that way. And that's something that Bradbury saw. And he believes that you know, we need books. And that's what this is saying. Uh, so Guy Montag, he decides not to burn down a book. He keeps a book for himself. And that's sort of what changes his life. And I don't want to spoil too much of the book because it's not that long. And so even saying a little bit can spoil a lot. But in a lot of ways, Guy Montag is not a good person but he's also a good person. And by that I mean Guy Montag is supposed to represent us as a reader. We're supposed to come to realizations about our own society as well through reading this book. And I feel everyone can benefit from reading this book because it can make them think about their own lives more and more. I think this will go down as one of the best classics of all time. It demonstrates heroism, it demonstrates love and compassion, and just the ability to freely think. I feel like as a society, that's what we're losing, the ability to freely think. In 1951, right after Bradbury had finished writing his book, he needed a title. He was going to originally go with The Fireman off of another short story he had written, but he ultimately decided against that. So, he called the, his local Los Angeles Fire Department and asked them at what temperature does paper burn? And they gave him 451 degrees. Um, later, um, it's been proven that that's not quite so true, but in any case, that's what he meant to do because it's talking about the burning of paper. And this, that's what this book is. The parallels between Bradbury's society and ours are quite scary, and I feel as if we don't do something to change that now, then our society will be like the one Guy Montag had to face in Fahrenheit 451. In conclusion, Fahrenheit 451 shows a lot about life today and yesterday, and the day after tomorrow. We need to change as people and grow and become more independent from our government and from other people in our lives. I believe just the littlest amount can change a lot. So I 100% recommend you to read Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 and let me know what you think. Uh, so I hope you guys like this video, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.